Number 25, letter A. How high a hill can a car coast up? Engine disengaged if work done by friction is negligible and its initial speed is 110 kilometers per hour. All right. So uh, here's the initial speed, right? I'm um, going to be 110, as I said, kilometers uh, per hour. I already noticed I should probably want to convert this into meters per second, right? So let's just get that. Let's just get that done. So 110 kilometers per hour, kilometers on the bottom, meters on the top, 1,000 meters, one kilometer, goodbye kilometers, hours on the top, seconds on the bottom, 3,600 seconds in one hour, hours go bye-bye, and that's meters per second now, right? So uh, 110 times 100,000, excuse, excuse me, <laughs> oh boy, I think it's time for a little break, 110 times 1,000 divided by 3,600. All right, so there's 30.6, right? So this works out to be about 30, uh, 30.6, 30 30.6 meters per second. All right, so that's the initial uh, velocity. So this is 30.6 meters per second. And then um, it says that it's going to, uh, we want to know the final height, right? So essentially, the car is going to go up some particular height here. We want to find out how much that is, all right? And uh, we have to think about one thing, right? Well, they said that the work done by friction is negligible. Therefore, we'll just assume there is no friction. And that being the case, we know then uh, that all of the kinetic energy initially will be converted to purely potential energy finally, okay? Because the car is not moving at the top, there's no kinetic energy. It would all be potential. And since there's no height at the start, there is no potential. It's all kinetic because it's moving. So this should be fairly straightforward, right? So for letter A, I would just write a formula like the potential energy due to gravity will equal uh, the uh, oop, the kinetic energy. Okay, I can also make you know the potential energy due to gravity at the final location should equal the kinetic energy at the initial location. Right. So this would work out to be if I expand. Right. I know the potential energy formula. I know the kinetic energy formula. So this would be. Uh, mass of the object times gravity multiplied by the final height should equal one half times the mass of the object times the initial velocity squared. Notice what happens to the masses. They cancel. And remember, we're looking for the height. So I can just solve this thing for height by dividing g on out. Okay, so the final height here should simply be one half times the initial velocity squared all divided by g. That's my nice, beautiful formula. So here, let's just plug in the values. 1 half times the initial velocity of 30.6, 30.6 squared all over 9.80. So the final height here and the highest it reaches should simply be 0.5 times 30.6 squared divided by 9.8, 47.8, 47.8, and that is meters. Okay, so that's the highest point. And that takes care of letter A. Moving on to letter B. So if, in actuality, a 750 kilogram car with an initial speed of 110 kilometers per hour is observed to coast up a hill to a height of 22 meters above its starting point, how much thermal energy was generated by friction? All right. So for this particular problem now, we notice that there is a discrepancy between the maximum height that could be achieved um, if no friction is at play and now 22 meters when friction is at play. Right, so we can uh, detail this by using the non-conservative work formula. Remember, friction is a non-conservative uh, force, therefore it produces non-conservative work. So we are looking for the thermal energy, right, and therefore we are looking for the non-conservative work because the work, right, has a value of joule, so that's in terms of energy. So for letter B, let's write down that equation. So the non-conservative work, which in this case is the work due to friction, will be equal to the final energy minus the initial energy. Okay, so what is the final energy in the problem? Well, if I were to draw a picture, I'm, I'm not really going to draw another picture. Let's just use this again. Right, the height here, remember it's not 47.8. The height here is now 22 meters because it's 22 meters above its starting point. So at the final location here, right, it has... It's not moving anymore. That's the highest point it reaches. There is no kinetic energy. Therefore, it's all potential energy, right? 
So I can write down now that the final energy will purely be potential energy due to gravity. Okay, final. Minus then, remember, all the energy was still uh, kinetic at the initial point because that vehicle had no height relative to the ground. So this is just one half times, actually, let me not break it up yet. So the kinetic energy initially. Now let's break it all up, right? So the, oops, the work due to friction, all right, should simply be MGH, okay, final, right, minus one half uh, MVI squared. I'm just plugging in these again, right, like I did over here. So now let's plug in the values. So the work due to friction, right, will equal the mass. Uh, what was the mass? 750, okay, times gravity, 9.80, times the final height. They said it reached 22 meters above the ground. Minus then one half times 750 times then the initial velocity, which was 30.6, and that's squared. So let's simply calculate it. So 750 times 9.8 times 22 minus 0 0.5 times 750 times 30.6, and that will be squared. Okay, and the work due to friction is going to be negative. 1.89, it looks about right, 1.89 um, times 10 raised to the, what is that, 5. Times 10 raised to the 5, and that's in terms of joules, okay? Should make sense because the force of the work due to friction is removing energy from the system. All right. So that takes care of that one. And now let's take a look at letter C. What is the average force of friction if the hill has a slope 2.5 degrees above the horizontal? All right, so let's go back to the picture here. I'm gonna go back to my picture. So I do know uh, this uh, angle in here, right? It's not 2.5 degrees, okay? Well, it's not, not a temperature, I put degrees Celsius. Mixing up now, uh, well, not mixing, I'm thinking about chemistry, I was just doing chemistry earlier. So in any case, um, now let's actually, I'm gonna just gonna erase this height value. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna plug in the value, all right, for this part, it was 22.0 meters, okay? And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm probably gonna have to find this distance that the car actually travels to its highest point. I'm probably gonna have to find that. But before I do, let me just, figure out a formula to make sure I do need that. All right, so again, they, they want me to find the average force of friction and we just found the work due to friction. So I'm thinking to myself, do I know a, a relationship, right? Excuse me, a mathematical relationship between the work of friction and the force of friction and it would be shown by that equation that I just boxed in, right? So the work of friction is equal to the force due to friction multiplied by the distance the object traveled, and then multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the force of friction vector and the displacement vector. Okay, so now we, we know this. Well, actually, we have to solve for the uh, force of friction, right? So let's just divide everything. Let's just divide D cosine theta on over to the other side. Cosine theta. Okay, so now I'm just left with the force of friction, let me leave myself a little more room. The force of friction, all right, should equal then the work due to friction divided by d times cosine of the angle between the force of friction and the distance. Okay, so do I know the work due to friction? I do, we just found it, so that's done. Do I know the distance it traveled? Mm, remember, think about the distance that the frictional force is acting on. This is the vertical displacement of the car, but the car is actually traveling on this slope, right? So this is the D that we wanna find. So how do we find that distance or how do we find that displacement? Well, you have a triangle, right? You know this length, you know this angle, and that's the hypotenuse, and this side is the opposite, so it sounds like sine, right? So let's do a little trig on the upper right-hand corner. So the sine of 2.5 should equal the opposite side, 22, right, all over D, all right? So solving here for D, we'll just do this quickly, would be 22 over sine of, of uh, 2.5. Uh, 
let's just get a number since we're running out of space down there. So simply do 22 divided by sine of 2.5, and we get a value of 504. So 504, and that's going to be in terms of meters. Okay, so guess what? We found the distance. Okay, so we know the work, we know the distance, and now how about the angle? Remember, this angle represents the angle between the force of friction vector and the distance vector. So let's go back on over to our picture. I'm just going to erase it, erase a couple of things here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let me just erase this. Okay, so now the direction of the distance, or, or I should just say the displacement, right, that this car uh, will be traveling will be in this direction, correct? It's basically up the slope and to the right. Where does friction point? Friction always opposes the motion, correct? So therefore, the friction will point in the exact opposite direction. Okay, and if I line them up tail to tail, what is the angle between these two vectors? Well, basically looks like 180 degrees, right? So that is the value of theta in this formula. It has nothing to do with this angle. Nothing. All right. So now we got enough to calculate. So the force of friction, right, should equal now. Um, what do we got here? So we have the work, right, uh, friction. Hold on one second, guys. I'm just looking at the... Uh, Okay, so this was negative 1.89 times 10, oops, times 10 uh, to the 5, right? Divided by then, the distance we just calculated to be 504, then multiplied by the cosine of 180. Okay, so what do we get? So the force of friction here will be equal to negative 1.89 times 10 to the 5 divided by 504 times cosine of 180. And there we go, 375. So 375, and that's gonna be in terms of, what do we got, Newtons, right? So 375 Newtons, that will be the force of friction. All right, so guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, hit that like button too, that would be great, and I'll see you in the next question. Take care.